spiritual guru dev asmati parvarad tama guru pad karma nitrila parish om vishnu pad ashtol taras tasvi rupa nuga chari varya shila bhakti vedanta narayan goswami maharaj secondly after my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my param guru dev to sri the prabhupada and to all of our sri rupa nuga gaudiya guru parampara Jai 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 Thank you. 
ないから。<笑><笑><笑> By the Gosus Masya Sri Guru and Gauranga, today we are honoring this most blessed, this most auspicious occasion, the Janmatiti, the birthday of our dear most Prem Purusha Shottama Sachinandan Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Ki. Shri Gaura Purnima Maha Mahotsava Ki! In the world, many persons, they know, they have heard about Sri Krishna and they worship Him. But unless and until one takes shelter of See Krishna's most merciful form, Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. It is not possible to enter into the sweetness of the pastimes of Vrindavan. Prima nam adbhuta ta sravana patakata kasya nam nam mahimna ko veta kasya Vrindavan vipina maha madurishu pravesha ko janati radham paramarasam chamatkara madurya simham Ekas Chaitanya Chandraha Paramakarunaya Sarvam Avis Chakaraha. The brain that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has revealed, no one had heard even the name of that brain. What is this Mahabhav, Madanakya Mahabhav? Prema Nama Dhutata Shravana Patakata. That glory had not even entered into anyone's ear. What to speak of, realize it. Before Mahaprabhu appeared, who had expounded the glories of the holy name? Without Mahaprabhu, it was not possible, Madhurisho Praveshaha, for anyone to enter in deeply into the Sweetest nectar of the kunjas of Vrindavan. And who knew that Shimati Radhika was the Paramarasam Madhurya Simha, the last limit of all the romantic mellows? Who knew? Ekas Chaitanya Chandraha Paramakarunaya, only Chaitanya Mahapu, out of cause of mercy, Saravam Avis Chakaraha, he discovered all of these things himself in his Leela. And he distributed to the world. Hmm? So Krishna Leela Amrita Sa Tara Shata Shata Da Das Dike Bohe Jaha Hohi Te Se Chaitanya Leela Hoi Sarovara Akshay Mano Hangsa Charaha Tohate Srila Krishna Das Kairaj Goswami Pad, he says that the pastimes of Sri Krishna, they are the Amrita Sa, the essence of the essence of all delicious immortal nectar. And those pastimes of Sri Krishna, Tara Shata Shata Dara, they're unlimited, they're flowing in hundreds and thousands of streams. Not in one direction, but in all four directions. No, the corners as well. Eight. No, up and down as well. Ten. Dasadike. <laughs> These rivers of the nectar of Krishna are flowing in hundreds of streams in all ten directions. But if streams are flowing, they must have some source. What is that source? Sai Chaitanya Leela Hoi Sarovara Akshay. There is a reservoir which is Akshay Sarovar. This lake, this reservoir is Akshay. It is inexhaustible. So it doesn't matter how many thousands and millions of streams of Krishna Leela flow in all directions from the lake of Gora Leela. It is never exhausted. And therefore, Srila Krishna Karaj is praying. Manohangsa charahatahate, 
All I want is that my heart, Manohangsa, should be like a swan. And the swan should just glide gracefully across the lake. Or that the Chaitanya Sarovar, the lake of Gorilila. Because those who will reside, their hearts always residing in that lake of Gorilila, it will carry them into unlimited pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Chaitanya Leela Murtapur, Krishna Leela Sukarpur, Dui Mili Hoi Sumadurya, Sadhu Guru Prasade, Tarade Ashwade, Sehijane Madhurya Prachur. Chaitanya Leela, Gora Leela, is Amritapur. That means it is like the condensed milk. And Krishna Leela Sukarpur. And Krishna Leela is like the finest quality camphor. So condensed milk is very delicious. But it's more delicious if it's mixed with the camphor also. So Dui Mili Hoi Sumadur. When the Krishna Leela and the Gora Leela are mixed together, then it becomes sumadurya, mm -hmm. extraordinarily sweet. So sadhu guru prasade, by the mercy of Guru Dev, tarayay mm -hmm. ashwade, those persons who will taste this mixture of Gauralila and Krishna Leela, say jane, madurya prachur, they will experience the madurya prachurya, that is. Abundance. Sweetness in abundance. So Sila Bhaktisthan Sotako, he would say that Sadhu Guru Prasade, by the mercy of Guru, one can taste this mixture. In other words, that is the duty. It is the responsibility of Sri Guru to make the disciples taste the mixture of Krishna Lila and Gora Lila. That is the actual Guru Tattva in this Kali Yuga. The responsibility of Sadguru in this Kali Yuga is to cause the disciples to relish this sweet mixture of Krishna Lila and Gora Lila. For three days or so now, morning and evening, we have been discussing the Gora Tattva. And the reasons for Mahaprabhu's appearance. Many of you were there, some were not there. Perhaps you saw online. Mm -hmm. So today, we want to discuss something very profound and dear to the followers of Srila Bhakti Thakur. You know that our Srila Bhakti Thakur, who's 150th birthday we are celebrating this year and for, for that event you know just last year to begin we published his unpublished works Gaudiya Darshan and on his, on his birthday this year in Mayapur we had the good fortune to offer to Prabhupada a new book Vedic Wisdom Tales 34 uh, stories from Veda and, and Upanishads and various scriptures with the explanations of Srila Bhakti Stansur Thakur. So, Srila Prabhupada, when in the year 1905, when he was 31 years old, he took his residence in Navadip Mayapur and sitting in one place, he began his Nam, Maha Nam Jagya. Shatakoti Maha Nam Jagya. The vow to chant a billion names. He was chanting 192 rounds, 3 lakhs Harinam every day for 10 years. And where did he do that? Which place did he choose? That place is now the place also of his Samadhi, where he's eternally absorbed in the nectar of the mixed nectar of Gauralila and Krishna Lila. So that is became the Mul March of the Gaudiya Mat, Chaitanya Mat there. And Srila Prabhupada called that place Brajpatan. 
Braj Patan means the place where Braj became manifested to him. He had the leel of becoming a siddha. Of course, he's a nitya siddha, but he's setting an example for us hmm? that we cannot be for our whole life only chanting 16 rounds. Hmm. Hmm? One day we'll have to follow his example and increase, really take shelter of the holy name fully without any distraction. So he called that place Braj Patanam. But the significance of that place is that that is the location of Chandrasekhar Bhavan. Chandrasekhar Bhavan. Chandrasekhar, he is a very dear associate of Sachinandan Gohari in the mood of Vatsalya Rasa, actually. Chandrasekhar is married to Sachi Mata's younger sister. The younger sister of Sachi Mata, her name is Malati. And so her husband is Chandrasekhar. So he's Nimai Pandit's uncle. Now, for whatever reason, and we know what the reason is, Rasa Vaisaha. Reason is always Rasa. So for a certain reason, Chandrasekhar and Malati, they never had any children. So you know, if there's an uncle and aunt who have no children, then they become very much attached to the nephew. And especially when, see, Jagannath Mishra passed away, then at that time, in all respects, Chandrasekhar became his father, like his father. And he took all responsibility for maintaining the household of Sachimata. Because her eldest son had left home, Nimai was still young, and she was a widow. So Chandrasheka Acharya took all responsibility for Sachimata, and he was like a second father to our Nimai Pandit. So Srila Bhaktisthan Thakur, he made his Bhajan Kutiya and the root mat, the mul mat of all the Gaudiya mats, there at the house of Chandrasekhar. What is the reason for this? We should know that it was in Chandrasekhar Bhavan that Sachinandan Gohari manifested for the first time transcendental devotional Gaudiya drama in the house of Chandrasekhar. Drama, Natakam, has a very important role in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. In fact, drama has a great history. We were mentioning the other day that if you go to Mathura on Vijay Dashami, the victory day of Lord Ramachandra, then the Chaturvedi Brahmanas of Mathura, they're all uh, engaged in performing dramas. There's a, bi there's a big one. Uh, in the Ram Leela field where thousands of people go. And there are also small ones in the, in the different Chaturvedi Brahmin families there. Why do they perform drama? The reason is that in Treta Yuga, Lord Ramachandra, he sent Shatrugna to the area of Mathura to protect the Brahmanas there and save them from a, de a demon named Lavanasur. So Shatrugna, he agreed to go on the order of Lord Ramachandra, and he took with him also Adi Varahadev. So he went there and established Adi Varahadev. But when Shatugna arrived in Mathura, he was feeling so much separation from Lord Ramachandra that he had no strength. So then the Brahmanas of that place, they composed and performed a Leela, Lord Ram's Leela, to invigorate him and pacify his separation. So the performance of Leela, it's not an entertainment. It's not like a theater or cinema or anything like that. It plays a very profound and important role in the devotional life of the advanced devotees. But it also makes the mysteries of Sri Krishna's Leela very accessible and understandable to general people. Again, another example we mentioned the other day, that when... Krishna was in Mathura and feeling intense separation from Shimati Radhika. At that time, Purnamasi Devi, she prayed to Bharat Muni, 
who has composed the Natya Shastra, in which all the techniques of drama have been described, how to make a stage, how to uh, decorate the actors, and various types of stage direction, and the ingredients of rasa. So after praying to Bharat Muni, then Purnamasi Devi wrote a drama, and she gave the script to Narad Muni, and Narad Muni went to Tumburu, the king of the Gandharvas. The Gandharvas are expert in singing and dancing, and he trained them, and they came to Mathura, and they made a performance of Vrindavan Lila to pacify the separation of Sri Krishna. And Sri Krishna, when he saw the Gandharva come upon the stage, dressed as himself in his Vrindavan Lila, Krishna was struck with wonder. And he became so bewildered, he was confused. He said, am I the actor on the stage looking out into the audience or am I the person in the audience looking at the actor on the stage? He became confused. But what does this illustrate? The inner, the inner essence of drama is, comes from Sadarnikaram. Aisham swa parasambanda niyamani nayohi yaha sataranyam tadevuktam bhavanam purvasuri bihi. All the ancient authorities on rasa, they have described that rasa is such that it has the achincha shakti, inconceivable power of sadarnikaran, that means generalization. In other words, if someone is sitting in the audience, and the drama is going on. Srila hmm? Vishen Chavitaku gives the example. One person was watching a drama of the Ramayana. And Hanuman, he was jumping over the ocean to go to Lanka. And one person in the audience, he was so absorbed, identifying with the feelings of Hanuman, that the transcendental rasa has this quality that it can generalize. And the divine rasa in the heart of Hanuman appeared in the heart of the actor and also from the heart of the actor overflowed into the heart of one old man in the audience. And when Lord Ram jumped, then a person in the audience, he also, Jai Sri Ram! <laughs> he jumped out of his seat and everyone was like, what's going on? Come down. <laughs> but actually, he didn't do it deliberately. He didn't think about it. He didn't plan it. It was because of Sardarnikaran, the achincha shakti, the inconceivable power of rasa to become generalized in those who are absorbed in some character in the drama. So drama, Vaishnav drama, transcendental drama, is not an ordinary thing. It is alokic, aprakrit, supernatural. And by this process, a devotee who has come into the stage of bhav, watching the dramas, he's bhav maya bhakti, can easily be transformed into Rasamai Bhakti. Another example is given that once there was a drama of Lord Ram, and when Lord Ram, he left Ayodhya, then the actor on the stage who was playing, the Dasrat Maharaj, the father of Lord Ram, he cried, Ha Ram, Ha Ram, Ha Ram. And as you know, Dasrat Maharaj, he gave up his life and he fell to the ground. He passed away. And all the audience, they were crying. Oh, he's a brilliant actor. But then, at the end of the scene, he was still lying there. <laughs> and he actually gave up his life. Because he was so absorbed in the rasa that the assistants had to come, close the curtains and remove him. Ram Nam Satyahe. Make his samadhi. Wow. So he had such pain because even if the characters seem to be characters of something that happened thousands of years ago, because the Leela is actually eternal, it's eternally present, it can manifest now in the heart of any devotee who's absorbed in hearing and chanting through the medium of the drama. So another example of drama in the, our history of Gaudiya Vaishnavism is the Kavi Karnapur, he has composed the Chaitanya Chandradaya Natakam. Hmm? The pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a Natakam. Natakam is the form of ten acts. So, why did he compose that drama? The reason is, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared from this world, then the king of Orissa, Prataparuja Maharaj, 
he was about to die, he was about to give up his life in separation. To, so to save the life of Prataparudra Maharaj, Kavi Karnapur, to pacify his separation, he composed and had the devotees perform this drama, Chaitanya Chanda Dvainataka. So, the pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his associates performing drama in Chandra Shekhar Bhavan has been presented in Chaitanya Bhagavat. And there, it's a very beautiful presentation. And they, one finds so much Aishwarya also. Different Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is manifesting the mood of various Shaktis. Sometimes Durga, sometimes Rukmini, sometimes Radharani. But in Chaitanya Chandra Dwayanatakam, Kavi Karnapur reveals that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed this drama in Chandra Shekha Bhavan, he especially manifested the Dan Kelly, the tax pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So one day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to his associates, in the morning time, today we will perform Nritya, a drama, and we'll do it Ankara Vidan. That means according to the rules and regulations of drama. So, hey, Sadashiv, oh, and you, Buddhi Mantakan, come here. So Buddhi Mantakan was a very wealthy person. You know, in his previous life, he was King Suvarna, Suvarna Saint from Suvarna Viha in the Gautram group. So, Mahapu said, oh, Buddhi Mantakan, I want you to collect very beautiful costumes and uh, makeup, cosmetics, and get cloth and build a stage with curtains and uh, make this in the house of Chandra Shekhar. And this evening, we'll perform a drama. Mapu said, in this drama, I will take the role of Shakti. And only those who are self-controlled, who have controlled their senses completely, only they will be allowed to watch this drama. Then Advaita Charya shook his head. He said, well, I guess I won't be going then. I'll not be allowed into this drama. Yeah? Why? Because the Advaita Charya is the incarnation of Lord Shiva. So what happened the last time the Supreme Lord took a female form? Huh? Mohini Murti, what happened to Lord Shiva? Yes, I know, he'd rather forget. All the Shivites were sitting in meditation with half closed eyes. Shivoham, Shivoham. And then they saw a very beautiful woman running, and behind her, Lord Shiva was running. <laughs> they wondered what was going on. So Advaita Charya said, um, You can count me out. I, I cannot go to this drama. Shiva Stakur said, Me too. I, I'm afraid I cannot attend. Why Shiva Stakur is Narada Muni? You remember once, Narada was in meditation and Kamadev, Cupid came and tried to disturb his mind. But Narada Muni, he remained completely absorbed in his meditation. He was undisturbed. So afterwards, he was feeling quite chuffed with himself. And he went to Lord Brahma and he said, oh, I have conquered Cupid. And Brahma, he said, well, yes, very good, but just keep it to yourself. Don't tell Lord Shiva. But he could not resist. After some time, he told Mahadev, you know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Mahadev said, yes, very good, but don't tell Vishnu. <laughs> but, and then you know what happened next. You know this? <clears throat> so we won't go into that story. But he was very embarrassed, and he looked in a mirror and saw he had a, a monkey's face. You know, <laughs> so, Srivastako, he said, I also can't attend this drama. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, look, if Advaita Charya, if you don't go, and Srivastako, if you don't go, then who will go? Who will be qualified to attend this drama? So listen, don't be worried. Today, you will all become Maha Yogeshwars. You will become great masters of mystic potency, and you will not become bewildered. So then... They went to the house of Chandra Shekhar and Chaitanya Mahapu gave out the roles to the different devotees. <coughs> oh, Haridas Thakur, you should be the Sutradhara. 
Sutradhara means the director of the drama. So usually in, in Western drama, you don't see the director. He's, you just don't see him. He's not on the stage. But in Vedic drama, the Sutradhara comes on the stage at the beginning. And he interacts with his assistant and sometimes with the audience as well. And then there's usually some kind of surreal segue from this world into the world of the drama. So these poetic, the dramatic techniques are used. So Mahapu said, Haridas Thakur, you will be the Sutra Dhara. Sutra means strings and Dhara means who holds. So just like a puppeteer pulls the strings and makes the performance go on. So the, the, the director of the drama is called Sutra Dhara. Then he said, oh Mukunda, you will be the Pari, Pariparshvaka. That means the assistant to the, um, the director. Oh, Vasudeva Acharya, you should make arrangements behind the scenes. You should be the stage manager, changing the, the scenes. <coughs> oh, Srivas Thakur, you should play Narad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nityananda, Nityananda is Avadut, he can play anyone. You can play Purnamasi Yogamaya. <laughs> Advaita Acharya, you can play Krishna. Oh, where is Gadada? Oh, Gadada, you can play Lalita Saki. Hmm? And uh, I will play Radhika. Hmm? Mapu will play Radhika. So then, only the players and their close family members, the wives of Advaita Charya, his sons, Shiva's Thakur's younger brothers, and so on, they were in the audience. So it was a very select audience. So everything was dark, and the music began to play. And there was a voice from behind the stage. The voice said, Jayati Janani Vaso, Devaki Janmavado, Yanubara Parishatswe, from the end of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami has placed all the sweetness and all the Aishwarya of Sri Krishna in one verse, just as a person could, as if placing the whole ocean within one clay pot. Miraculously, this verse. All Gaudiya Vaishnavas, it's prescribed. They have, you have to say this verse as soon as you wake up in the morning. When you wake up, give Pranam to Gurudev then jump out of bed and Jayati Janani Vaso. This is the way to start the day. Mm -hmm. All glories, all glories to that Krishna who lives with his own, his Janani Vas. He lives with the bridge buses. Devaki Janmavado. Some people say that he is the son of Devaki, but that's only a theory. You know, Mayavad is a theory. There are different Vads, theories of Devaki Janmavad. The theory that he is the son of Devaki. <laughs> eh? But we don't accept it. He's the son of Madhya Shoda. Yadu Bara Parishatswa Dharma. Hmm? Through his associates, the Yadus, he de removes all Adharma from the world. But when he leaves Vrindavan at that time, every moving and non moving creature in Braja is suffering in separation. But Jayati Janani Vasu, now he came back to live amongst the bridge buses. So Stiraja, Chara Brijinagna, Susmita Sri Mukena, by his beautiful smiling face, he removes all the pain of separation from the bridge buses. And especially Brajapur Banitanam, Vardayan Kamadevam. And by his sweet smile, he awakens the cupid, amorous desires in the hearts of Brajagopis. So as this verse was. Resounding in the air just then, Mukunda and Haridas Thakur came onto the stage, the Sutradhara and his assistant. Mukunda said, Oh, what does my Lordship order me to do today? Haridas Thakur said, Oh, gentle one, I have some news for you. This morning I met with Narad Muni. The assistant said, Really? And what happened? Well, Today I was just returning from my daily prayers and uh, I met Narad and Narad approached me and he said, Hey Sutradhara, king of actors, 
For a long time, I have wished that you should present before my eyes, using your dramatic skills, the beautiful pastimes of Brindavan Bihari Lal Sri Krishna. This is my desire. So please, fulfill that desire today. So then I said to Narad, surely I'll fulfill this desire today. Mukunda said, Narad is a great sage. He's completely satisfied. Why does he have this longing to see a drama? And why does he want to see a drama about Krishna's Boma Leela, his earthly pastimes? So then Haridas Thakur, he said, you know in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Atmaramas Chamunayo, Negranta Apyarukrame, Kravanta Hoyta Kimbaktin, Itam Bhuta Ganohari. Even the great sages who are near Granta, the knot of false ego has been untied. Who are near Granta, that means they are not under the control of any regulations of Granta, the scripture. Those Atmaram, Rishis and Munis, even though they are self-satisfied, but still, they want to engage in hearing, chanting and remembering about Sri Krishna because his divine qualities are so wonderful. So then the assistant said, I understand that liberated persons, they want to serve Krishna, but why is he attracted to Krishna's Boma Leela, his pastimes on earth? So then, Haridas Thakur as the Sutradhar, he said, don't speak in this way. Don't you know when Sri Krishna manifests his Leela in Bhoma Brindavan, it is a sweeter than the pastimes of Vaikuntha. The stories of Sri Krishna and even of his incarnations are sweet. But the stories about how he creates the universe, these all dry and tasteless. And so Narada has no interest in this. He wants to see the Bhoma Leela. Because the, in Srimad Bhagavatam he said, Anugrahaya Bhaktanam Manasam Deyam Asrita Bhajateita Drishi Krida Ya Shrutva Tatparo Bhavet The meaning is, out of kindness for his devotees, Sri Krishna appears in this world and performs pastimes like a human being. And these pastimes are so sweet that one must hear them and by hearing them, ya shrutva tatpara bhavet, you become tatpara. That means absorbed. The meaning is not only do you become absorbed in hearing the lila, but by hearing, you become personally absorbed into the lila yourself. Hmm? Understand? It's like a transference. It's like immigration. <laughs> The persons from this world, by hearing the Leela, they can integrate into Krishna's pastimes simply by hearing them. So, Haridas Thakur said, this is why Narad, he wants to see this drama. It's so relishable. So then, Mukunda said, all right, let's wait until he arrives and then we'll organize a drama for him. Haridas Thakur said, no, no, he's, he's coming just now. He's going to arrive here any minute. A person who can fly through space is never late. <laughs> they don't get stuck in a jam or anything. <laughs> Straight through space at the speed of mind. So now it's coming just now. So then Makunda said, what drama will we do? Haridas Thakur said, Yoga Maya Purnamasi Devi has written a drama. It seems like she's really into that. Why? Because Yoga Maya is the Lila Shakti. She's actually not only the author of the dramas, she's actually the author of the dramas. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> she's always the author of the drama, whether it's literally or figuratively. Because Yoga Maya is a Leela Shakti. Hmm? So then, from off stage there was a voice. It was the voice of Narad actually. Hey, Sutradhar! Hmm? What's the delay? What's the delay? Is the drama ready yet? So then the Sutra Dharma, Dharma panics. We, uh, hey, he told to Mukunda, we haven't even cast the actors yet. Let's quickly go and find everyone for their roles. And so then the Sutra Dara, Mukunda and Haridas Thakur, they quickly run off the stage in a panic that, oh, it's a disaster. 
So this is actually a typical um, conceit, a, a typical technique in Vedic drama that you introduce to the director and he's in a frenzy. He's having a nervous breakdown because everything's not ready for the drama. Like that. So I think those persons who have ever directed a drama, they've had that emotion. And so that's actually written into the Vedic dramas of the, di the anxiety of the director. <laughs> I think it's to, it's to elicit the sympathy from the audience. <laughs> so then, uh, in a panic, Haridas Thakur and Vakunda, they run off the stage, and then... Naharat Muni Bajai Binaru Radhikaramana Me Shiva's Thakur comes onto the stage. Uh, playing the role of Nard Muni, carrying his veena. Sachi Mata was in the audience. She could not even recognize. She, Who's that? Who's that? Hmm? Shiva Stako's wife, Malini, said, oh, it, it's my husband. <coughs> Sachi was, it's your husband? <sighs> and she fainted. <laughs> uh -huh. Really, Shiva Stako, really, he, he is Narad. So Sachi Mata couldn't believe it. She was actually having the darshan of Narad and, and she fainted. So then, Narad came onto the stage and he began to look around. Oh, how beautiful is Brindavan. The Jamuna River is flowing and making a kalkal dhwani, sweet sound. On both sides of the river, there are beautiful trees. Kadamba, Tamal, Amra, Bakul, Ashok. They're all blooming and covered with uh, flowering creepers. A beautiful breeze is blowing and bumblebees are humming and becoming maddened by the fragrance of the lotus flowers in the Jamuna. Peacocks are spreading their tails and dancing and calling and cuckoos in the trees. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> How, this Brindavan is so beautiful that my father himself has prayed. Lord Brahma has prayed, it would be a matter of great fortune for me if I could take any birth in this Brajamanda, in Gokul, in Vrindavan, or even on the other side of the river, in Gokul. Even if I could become a blade of grass or a stone there, it will be great fortune for me because in this Braj, that's Jivitam to Nikilam Bhagavan Makundas. All of these bridge buses, they are the Jivana, they are the life of Mukunda. They give life to Mukunda. Or it can mean that Mukunda gives life to the bridge buses, that they, Krishna is living in all the senses of the bridge buses. They see him always. Krishna's in their eyes, he's in their ears, he's in their sense of smell. And how is he there with folded hands saying to the bridge basses, Oh, how can I serve you? What can I do for you? Hmm? Krishna said, Sarva Dhamam Parijana Mame Kamishanam Raja. Give up everything and surrender to me. But Krishna himself is completely surrendered to the residence of Braja. So Narad Muni. He was in ecstasy, looking around Vrindavan, and just at that time, then he heard a very beautiful sound in the distance, on the top of Govardhan Hill. See, Krishna was playing his flute. Surata Samara Peri, Bankriti Putanare, Jayati Vidaya Dangsi, Kopi Bangsi Ninadaha. Narad said, Oh, Kopi Bangsi Ninadaha. What is that flute sound? Hmm? Kopi. Hmm? Who is playing? He knows who's playing. But when you say Kopi, someone is playing. Then it indicates this is so amazing. Hmm? It indicates the Ascharya. Astonishment. What is it? Madhurima Rasabhapi. The sound of this flute is so joyful. It is like the warbling of swans. 
You know, swans, they fly for thousands and thousands of miles until finally they arrive at Manasarovar in the Himalayas. And when they arrive there, ah, they're so happy. But he's saying this flute is filled with such joy. It sounds like a flock of swans who are warbling with joy having landed onto a lake of Madhuya Rasa, of pure nectar, of love. Pranayap Kusumabhapi, Bringa Sangeeta Gosha. The sound of this flute is jubilant like the sound of intoxicated bumblebees who have not found a flower garden, but they found a garden of flowers made of pranai, very intimate and confidential love. The sound of this flute is like Surata Samara Bheri, Bankati Bhutanare. It is like if there's about to be a battle, then the soldiers on both sides, boom, 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 boom. They beat there various types of drums, dundabi drums, dhol, and others very loudly. And it indicates now the fight is on. Hmm? Everyone, all the soldiers, are there, their hairs are standing on end, they're ready. Now it's time for the battle. Hmm? Nardmoni said, when I hear the sound of this flute, it is like the beating of the kettle drums, announcing that now the love battle of Radha Krishna is on. <laughs> hmm? The amorous battle is about to take place. This is the preface of that drama. Jayati Ridaya Dangsi, the sound of this flute bites the heart. Hmm? It can be physically felt as if biting the heart. It's all glorious to that flute singing of Sri Krishna. Nard looked around. He said, look, the mountains are crying. The hairs of the trees, that means their new buds are sprouting as if they're experiencing the romance, haripulation. Does it mean that the lotus feet of that person who is glorified in the Vedas, who is glorified by Brahma and Shiva, will those lotus feet now come before our eyes? Then Nard Muni, because if uh, Krishna will see a sage, a rishi, will have to become very reverential. About him. So that, then Nard Muni, he wants to see sweet pastimes. So he quickly ran and he hid behind some bushes. Hmm? And then from the bushes, he said to himself, Oh, and if Krishna will come, will also those very beautiful and sweet and shy Braja Gopis also come this way? And Narad Muni, he went away to hide. Just then, as the sound of Krishna's flute was going everywhere, all the trees of Govardhan, they began to blossom. The Ashok trees were blossoming. The Amra trees, mango trees were blossoming. The Bakul trees were blossoming. But it wasn't because of the sound of Krishna's flute. The reason was that Shimati Radhika and her Sakis were coming. They were on the way, they were walking there. And it said that if a chaste lady will touch an Ashok tree with her foot, it will burst into bloom. It is said that if a chaste lady will embrace a mango tree, it will burst into bloom. It is said that if a chaste lady will spit on a buckle tree, then it will burst into bloom. So because when Krishna played his flute, the gopis all became dizzy and they couldn't stand up. They all started embracing the trees and drooling. <laughs> and so all the trees in the forest, they burst into flower. Now, this Dan Lila is beginning. We say, Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swami Rupa Kadamayam Though not so much detail has been given by others up until this point, but because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's innermost heart's desire was fulfilled by Srila Rupa Goswami, the bhavs that he was manifesting in Chandra Shekhar Bhavan were manifest to the world through Rupa Goswami in his explanation of the Dhan Kali, Dhan Kali comedy. So there, he gives the essence of this drama. What is the essence? Vibhur api kalayan sabdha vridhim Guru api gorva chayaya bihina 
This pastime, the speciality of this pastime is it is manifesting the glories of Radhika's Anurag. Anurag. So in Sanskrit there are so many words for love. Praying, Snaya, Manu, Pranaya, Rag, Anurag. Jai Sisi, Radhika Ki Jai. So we may think, we may think of love, this word means love, this word means love, this but actually all of these terms they are very, very different. They are a completely different experience. They are like levels. and Each one is like another world compared to the next one, actually. So here, the Anurag of Radhika is being glorified. What is it like? Vibhura Pikalyan Sadab Prithim. Just as see Krishna is the Ashray of Viruddha Dharma, Krishna is the abode of all mutually contradictory characteristics. For example, when Mother Yashoda binds him, he's simultaneously vibhu, he has vibhutva, he's all-pervading, but also parischinata, he's limited because the rope went around his waist. Even when the rope was too short by two fingers to go around his waist, still there was a golden chain of bells <laughs> around his waist that his mother had put there earlier. So Krishna is the abode of Viruddha Dharma. Viparayai, contradictory characteristics. So in the same way, Shimati Radhika's brain is filled with contradictions. Mm -hmm. And this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is manifesting to the world in Chandrasekhar Bhavan. The contradictory characteristics of Radhika's Anurag. Vibhara Pikalyan Sada Vibhridhim. First of all, it is Vibhu. Her love is all pervading. So there's no, it can't expand anymore, but still it's increasing. How is that possible? Well, it's a very deep mystery. And we discussed it just at Govardhan. Did anyone see the lectures from the Govardhan retreat last week? Yeah. Okay. I will not tell it today. You can hear that. So, Vibhara Apikalayam Sadhavarid Him, Guru Api Gauravacharya Behina. Even though Radhika's Prem is the heaviest, it is the most important, it is the most significant. But, Gauravacharya Behina. She has no pride at all. She considers herself to be so insignificant. I have not even a scent of love for Krishna. Hmm? And even though, you know, if a person is pure hearted, then they're very honest and straightforward. But even though Radhika's love is completely shuddha, completely pure, it's completely vakra. Totally crooked. Filled with all types of duplicity, all types of uh, cheating, and uh, and behavior that you would not expect from a pure-hearted person. <coughs> so, sadanu bhuta api yaha kurvam nava navam priyam rago bhavan nava navaha sanuroga itiriyate. Anurag means that love where even if the object of love is seen. Again and again, the person always feels, I have never seen him before. Hmm? Or I have seen him, but I have never seen him so sweet before. His sweetness is increasing more and more at every moment. And the love itself also tastes sweeter at every moment. So two things related to the ashraya of the love. The love is becoming sweeter at each moment as if I have never loved before. Hmm? And the object of love, Krishna, is sweeter at every moment. So just then, as the gopis, they were, actually, they were, where were they going? They're on the way to the yagya of Baguri Rishi. Hmm? Baguri Rishi is performing a yagya. And Purnamasi Devi announced, Baguri Rishi is performing a sacrifice at Govinda Kund at Govardhan. And if any... <coughs> Any person will donate some ghee or yogurt or ingredients, some magri for this sacrifice, then all their desires will be fulfilled. And this is why, even though Shimati Radhika, she is so soft and tender and a princess, and she doesn't have to do any work, she has so many maidservants, but Radhika herself is personally carrying a golden pot upon her head, full of ghee, and walking past Govardhan, on her way, that place is now called Dangati, 
You know, there's Dangati, then Dandavat and Kund. She's going past that area because she's on her way to Govinda Kund to take the ghee for the Jagya. So she doesn't need to do any work, but she's doing this work because she has the strong desire to meet with Krishna, to serve Krishna and please Krishna in all ways. That's why she's going there. But as soon as Krishna appears there, she acts like, what are you doing here? Get out of my way. Don't disturb me. I'm a very chaste lady. I'm going to the Jagya. And all the crookedness comes. The crookedness comes up. In fact, she's so crooked. She's so crooked that she intends, though she's going to the Yagya, her whole idea is that she's going to go a particular way in the hope that Krishna will come and detain her and harass her and keep her there for a long time. And if Krishna will argue with her and have pastimes with her for a long time, then she'll be late for the Yagya. And then how can the sages start the Yagya without the ghee? So Radharani, she's so crooked that she gives some pots of ghee on the heads of her maidservants and says, you quickly run ahead. So if I, just in case I'm delayed, you never know. You have to err on the side of caution. Take precautions. You never know anything could happen. So just in case I'm delayed, you rush ahead. So the brahmanas won't be delayed in the, the starting time, the auspicious astrological time to begin their yagya. So just see, she's completely crooked, completely deceitful in everything that she's doing. Hmm? So Radhika is walking there with her pots and with her sakis. Some have gone ahead, just in case. <laughs> huh? And she hears the sound of Krishna's flute and the gopis are holding the trees and they're bursting into bloom. Hmm? And then Radhika looks and she sees, now Krishna's coming down. Uh-oh, here comes the troublemaker. Mm -hmm. He's coming down gradually from the top of Govardhan Hill and approaching the gopis. At that time, Radharani, seeing him, she's amazed. Prapanna panta namhari asakrit asmanayanayo apurvo yam purvam kvachidapi nadristo nadristo madurima I have never seen, Nadishto Maduruma, I have never seen such sweetness before. Pratike Pyekyasya Spurati Mura Angasya Sakiya Sriyastasya Patum Lavam Pisamata Nadrigiyam. Radharani, she says to her Sakis, Oh, a Sakrit many times. Prapanna Pantanam Hari came onto the path of my eyes. Apurvo Yam. But this is unprecedented. Even though I saw him many times before, I have never before seen such sweetness in my life. And his sweetness is such that even though I'm looking towards him, my eyes are incapable, asamarta, they are incapable of drinking the beauty of even one part of one of his limbs. What to speak of a whole limb or all of his limbs. It's impossible. So Radhika is in, in shock like this. It's impossible. She can't see the whole of Krishna. She can only take a little bit of the beauty of one limb or another limb at a time. This is Anurag. Hmm? New, new, new. I have never seen anything like this before. Hmm? At that time, Brenda Devi, she's laughing. She said, Yada, yada, pasyati madhavam puras, tatata vaivasya vadasya puravatam, navahasada shatkimayam tatatava. Hmm? Oh Radhika, every time that you see Krishna, you say, I've never seen him like this before. <laughs> He's, I've never seen such sweetness. So I'm confused. Is it that between the last time you saw him and today, Krishna became more sweet? Or is it that being blinded by love, your eyes have forgotten how sweet he was the last time you saw him? What is it? This is the question that Brinda Devi asked. And this philosophical question, until today, has never been answered by anyone. <laughs> you cannot solve this. Hmm? So this is Anurag. And then as Sri Krishna, he walks down the hill and he's getting closer to Radhika. Then what happens? There's a transformation of her stai bath. You know, after praying, praying means 
Sarvata dongsa rahitam sati pi dongsa karne. That bhava bandana yunasa prema prakirtita. That bondage of affection which can never be broken. Even though there are many causes for the love to be broken. But it's indestructible. That is called prem. And aruya paramam kashtam prem chit deepa deepana. When this prem rises to the highest point, then it becomes chit deepa deepana. That means the object of love suddenly shines before the eyes in such an attractive way, more attractive before, that makes the heart completely melt and the eyes, they can never be satiated by seeing the beauty. But snehastut krishnata vaptya maduram maniyam navam yo dakshinyam samana itikirjate when sneha rises to its most excellent point, then the sweetness which is being experienced takes on a new fresh appearance and the heart becomes crooked. Avahitabhav comes. One feels like, oh, he's so beautiful, but I want to hide it. I will hide this emotion and crookedness comes. And in this way, when affection becomes crooked, it turns into man. The contrary mood. So just as Sri Krishna is coming down from the hill, he's looking at Radhika and he's watching Radhika's brain go through these transformations in real time. Huh? In other words, she was looking at him with anurag. Her heart was melting with affection. And then he saw her suddenly get all crooked. <laughs> Become all crooked on him. What's going? He hasn't even arrived there yet. He's just as he's coming down the hill, and he's relishing that in his heart. See, Krishna said to himself, "Stule radikaya payodra gehara prasadi krita kyate balataya kachet kutileis molir vatirno naya vinyastam sruti sevino apibasi malinya meva nayor." It's not sure that I am Ishaya Mirgadisha Shankai Mumuch Chajabam. Krishna said, What is this that I'm seeing? Radharani, she has decorated, she has honored her breast by decorating it with a beautiful jeweled necklace. She has honored her hair also with a beautiful jeweled tiara crown. But her eyes, which are so beautiful, she has uh, disgraced them by, you know, if someone comes and you want to dishonor them, you can get a handful of kajal and make their face black. But she's dishonored her eyes by giving black kajal. And now because the eyes, which are so uh, respectable, they've been dishonored, while the others who are less have become honored. Now those eyes have become I'm afraid that the eyes have given up their simplicity and become crooked. Hmm? So the meaning is this. Let's say there's an assembly, a Dharma Sabha, a religious assembly, and three persons arrive there. One of those persons is an adult, but he's a bit dense. Hmm? He's a bit dense. But he arrives, and there's a small boy as well, and then there's a, a Brahmin scholar of the Vedas. So the three of them come into the assembly and everyone stands up and they give a garland to the uneducated foolish man. Then they give a garland to the, to the child and then they put some black on the face of the scholar of the Vedas. He's gone. How will he feel? Huh? How, he'll feel so indignant. He just explode with indignation. So Krishna, when he looks at Radhika, he sees this. Stule Radhikaya means the breast of Radhika is stool. That means a bit dense. Huh? Stool means dense. That means her breast is very firm. So it's like the person who is dense. But he was honored with a jeweled necklace. The hair is balataya. Bal, bal means like a child. Hmm? So her hair has been decorated. So the child has been honored. But the eyes are sruti sevi. Sruti sevi means... Those who have served and studied the Vedas, right? So it's like a great scholar. But Radhika's eyes are sruti sevi, means they are serving sruti, her ears. In other words, the eyes are so long and lotus-like and beautiful. And when she goes into man, then she squints a little bit. And then the eyes look very long. 
And because our heart is restless, you know, if someone has a very self-controlled chitta, then their eyes are steady. But if someone feels so many emotions that the eyes are going here and there. So the eyes of Radhika are jumping and they're doing Suti Sevi, serving her ears. Hmm? So the eyes are like a scholar of the way, the Suti Sevi, you know, and they've been disrespected with black kajal. So Krishna, Shankayma Mutschajavam, I'm afraid that her simple eyes have given up their simplicity and now they've become crooked. Hmm? So how can see Krishna only seeing this transformation of Radhika's frame in real time? Just spontaneously compose such poetry. Hmm? That is the anubhava of brain. Brain is like that. Hmm? You know, if a man has attraction for a woman and he sees her, oh, you look nice today. No, if he's in love, you'll say, oh, can I compare thee to a summer's day? <laughs> When there's love in the heart, it's just, everything is flowing like poetry. So this is the Anubhava of Krishna as he's coming down. This is Dan Kelly. It hasn't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> you can drown in, in the, just any one drop of this Leela. You can drown for your whole life. So beautiful. This is what Mahaprabhu wanted to manifest in Chandra Sheikha Bhavan. And Srila Rupa Goswami, fulfilling Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam, he has opened it out, revealed it to the world. So just then, see Krishna, as he was coming down, Radhika became in man, and Balita took the hand of Radhika and said, look, that rogue is coming, we should leave this place immediately. Let's not uh, dawdle here, let's not delay here, let's just get out of here as quick as we can before he harasses us. Hmm? And so then the gopis, they turn to walk away and escape. But just then, what happened? Giraj Govardhan is also a great devotee. Antaya Madhya Abala Haridasava, he is a great devotee. So then on the path, Giraj Govardhan manifested stone chips. Oh, no. huh? You know, that usually if you walk at that part of Govardhan, there's really soft stand. But then Govardhan, because he's doing seva, who is serving the leelas of Radha Krishna, he manifested stone chips. So when Lalita said, come on, let's get out of here, then Radhika and the gopis said, ow, ow, and they're walking really, really slowly. Why? Because actually they don't want to leave. The whole point of sending the, some manjus ahead was, the plan was to be harassed by Krishna and not avoid him. But they're making a show because this is all the Watch, the Anurag of Radhika, it's pure, but it's completely crooked. Huh? Let's leave. Ow, 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 we can't walk very fast. It's very, the ground is very, very rough here. So they're not actually going anywhere. <laughs> so then see Krishna, he comes down and immediately, though they love each other, but they don't say, I love you. What do they do? They start arguing. Because that's the nature of praying. Stotram yatya tatastatam prakatayast chittasudate bhyatam ninda api pramadam priyachati pariha sasriyam vibrati doshena shaitam gunena gurutam kena pinatam vati prema swara sikasikasiti dayam vikriti prakriya. Puramasi herself has said, Oh, the nature of this love is such that if the lover will say to the beloved some sweet words of praise, then the beloved will think, what's wrong? Hmm? <laughs> Why? Because when love is there, it's not expressed. Prema, dvayo, rasikayo, ayedipa, eva, ridveshva, basati, nishchala, eva, bhati, dvara, dayam, vadam, astu, bahiskritas, chet, nirvati, shigam, apatala, gotam, vaiti. Radharani herself has said, Prem is like a very steady lamp kept in the cottage of the heart. And it's not expressed. The light shines from the eyes, but it's not expressed with the mouth. So when they meet each other, Krishna is so much in love with Radhika. Radhika is so much in love with Krishna. They immediately start teasing each other. Hmm? Comes in the form of teasing, deception, teasing, competition, changing moods. These are all the Brajaniti. I remember last time I was here, I spoke on this subject. Kojanata Matura Brindavana Ko Janata Prajanita Ko Janata Radha Madhavarati 
ko janat sohi prita jan kali rupa sharira nadaratva Oh, if Rupa Goswami had not come in this world, then who would understand the nature of this love of Vrindavan, which is filled with the Viruddha Dharma, so many reversals. So, as Krishna comes there, they begin to argue. Hmm? Radharani said, oh, don't come near me. Hmm? Why? We're going to the Jagya. We are Dharmic ladies performing our religious duties. And you are so irreligious that if the air that touches your body touches this ghee, it will be contaminated, it will be useless, we won't be able to offer it to the bhaktis. Hmm? Radhika, Lalita, and all the sakis that begin arguing and criticizing Sri Krishna. Priya yadi man kare kare vatsan veda stuti hoiti hari se moraman Sri Krishna himself admitted that if the Vedas, they offer prayers to me, then it's okay. But when my beautiful beloved gopis, they abuse me and criticize me and tease me, when I hear the angry words, then my heart is stolen away from the prayers of Brahma and Shiva and the, the prayers of the Vedas. I forget all that. And I relish their sweet abuse. Karali Kanakti Krida Karanga. Oh, you're like a pet deer on the chain of the granddaughter of Karali Karala, that means the, the grandmother of Chandravali. How they criticize Krishna with such sweet abuse. Mm -hmm. And Krishna is Rasik Shaikh, he is relishing that. So as they're arguing, at some point Krishna, he tries to touch Shimati Radhika. At that time, she's the, mm, withering away from his touch. Mm -hmm. Vishranto da tipani roda rachanam, shushkam tata krandanam, shishto ya sakira daya, muhur ayan sangopano pakramo, baba stena ridis titomur de vidi, vyakta samanta do but. Brinda Devi is watching. She says to the sakis, pasya pasya, look, look, look what's happening to Radhika when Krishna is just. These moments are amazing. Of course, the leader is flowing very quickly. But the advantage of being able to just hear the poetry is just to zoom in and in that moment and relish the nectar of that moment. In that moment, Radharani's eyebrows become crooked. She's frowning. That means though her eyebrows are frowning, but her mouth is starting to smile and her cheeks are starting to puff up with the smile. Mm -hmm. At the same time, she's saying, nahi, nahi, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. But as she's saying, no, 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 her voice is choking. Gud, gud. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not coming out because she's so ecstatic. Vishrantuttadipani mm -hmm. Ratanam. And she's by her hands, she's trying to check Krishna. But... She's in such ecstasy from the touch of Krishna that she's losing all strength and becoming weak. <laughs> and so her, her physical resistance, it lacks audatya, it, it lacks boldness. Hmm? So that means that though she's trying to defend herself, she's actually not trying to defend herself. She's letting Krishna catch her. Hmm? She's come to Takranda and she's crying. But no tears are coming. <laughs> dry, dry crying. So in this way, Shishto ya sakira deya muhura ayam sangopano pakramo. Even though Radharani, she's doing sangopana, she's trying to hide her love for Krishna. But the more she tries to hide her love for Krishna, the more her love for Krishna begins to peep out. Hmm? And Brenda saying, Pasya Pasya, look at this. How sweet. Radhika's love is pure, but so crooked. How she's trying to hide it. And at the same time, it's manifesting. Uh, here, the crookedness of the eyebrows means asammati. Asammati, that means disapproval. Disagreement. Hmm? That's the meaning of the moving of the eyebrows. But because she's starting to smile, that smile is indicating paramasammati. I fully approve. Hmm? Eyebrows are saying, no, no. I disapprove. And the mouth is saying, yes, yes. I approve. Nahi nahi means 
Absolutely not. Na, not. He, absolutely. Na, he, na, he, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But because she has a swara bait, the trembling of the voice due to sattvic bhavs, then even though she's saying, nishet, na, he, na, he, means nishet, it is forbidden, it is forbidden. But because her voice is trembling, the trembling in her voice is saying, actually, it's obligatory, it's mandatory, it's required, it's necessary, it's essential, it's imperative. It's not nished, forbidden. It's paramavidhi. Hmm? It must be done. Paramavidhi. Krishna, you must harass me. That's why I came here. Oh, how pure is her love. But completely crooked. So she's checking Krishna with her hands. Putting up the hands means anabhishta. You know, abhishta means what you, your cherished desire. So anabhishta means I really, really don't want this to happen. Anabhishta. But because her, all strength is drained from her and she's becoming weak and her resistance is like, oh, yeah, don't, don't. <laughs> Very gentle. So that's actually encouraging to Krishna. And so the, the, the lack of, of uh, forcefulness in her arms, it does not indicate anabhista, undesired, but indicates paramabhista. Yes, yes, I want, this is my most cherished desire that you should catch me. And her weeping, the crying of Radhika, this indicates, this is dukkha vyanjaka, indicates suffering. Hmm? So if someone does some improper behavior or some mistreatment, it causes you to suffer. But because Radhika is crying, but the, the tears are not coming. It's a fake crying. Therefore, it's showing the Krishna, no, your activity is a shuddhattva. It is faultless. It is perfect. Yes, yes, this is what I want. So, in this way, what is manifest at this moment? This is called Kila Kinchit Bhav. Garva Abhilasa Rudito Smita Surya Bayakrudam Sankari Karnam Hashad. Uchite kila kinchitan. Seven emotions. Pride. She's very proud. Oh, how Krishna has come to me. He didn't go to Chandravali. Hmm? Garva. Abhilas. She's filled with desires. And Krishna is now about to fulfill those desires. Rudita. Crying. Even if it's fake. But crying. <laughs> Smita. Smiling. Asuya. Expressing hostility to Sri Krishna. Bhai. Fear. Oh, what if anyone will see us? Someone is passing by. And Kurda means the anger. She's becoming angry with him. But Sankari Karanam Hasan, she shrinks away with him. Arshad. Arshad means out of jubilation. So in this preparation of Kila Kinjit Bhav, it's like a rasagula. If you make a rasagula, you cannot make it with one ingredient. You have to have you have to have some cane juice, you have to have some elaichi, you have to have some karpur, cardamom, camphor. But the base. The basis of this uh, rasagula is the, the curd. Hmm? The, the, the cheese curd is the, is the basis. So in the same way, all of those emotions, they are the various the upakar, various ingredients. But the base of this kila kinchik bhav is harsha. It's just filled with jubilation. And actually, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, he says that he's manifested this Dan Kelly, especially to show... This beautiful Kilakinchit Bhav, which is based on Harsha, great joy. You see? Because Rupa Goswami had written Lalit Madhav, and he gave the, the manuscript to Raghunath Das Goswami. And, and this is full of separation. When Raghunath Das Goswami was reading it, he was weeping, rolling on the ground, he gave up eating. Days were going by, and he was about to die. So then Rupa Goswami thought, oh, how can I save him? So then he wrote this Dan Kelly comedy. This Dan, why? Because the basis is harsha, jubilation. And then he came to Raghunath Tassa Swami. Oh, give me that manuscript. I've got another one for you. Huh? And then when Raghunath Tassa Swami read this, then it saved his life. Hmm? But where did Rupa Goswami get the inspiration from? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had manifested these contradictions of love for the first time. This beauty of Kila Kinchit Bhav in the Chandrasekha Bhavan, in the drama there. So, actually there's an interesting thing about Kila Kinchit. Kila Kinchit only happens when the Sakis are present. Hmm? If the Sakis aren't present, 
then still garb abilasarudita all those emotions manifest but it's not called kila kinchit it's called kuttamita but this is the difference the difference between kila kinchit and kuttamita is whether the sakis are present or not so here the sakis are present so it's kila kinchit krishna has come and done some notorious the mischief mischievous behavior and then this bhav comes in Shimati Radhika. Another example Srila Jiva Goswami Park gives is the Vastraharan Lila. This is extreme killer kinchits. Because gopis were bathing in the water up to their waist, but they were they were not dressed. And Krishna stole their clothes and climbed a tree. And then some very small boys who were with him, Dam Vasudam, they were they they began to laugh and the gopis looked around, where are clothes? And then they saw Krishna in the tree. <sighs> And they became so shy and they all quickly dunked under the water up to their necks. Hmm? So now the Jamuna River was just full of faces. <laughs> like lotus flowers and every face had Kila Kinjit Bhav. Can you imagine the joy of Krishna looking at a Jamuna just full of every face is Kila Kinjit Bhav. Hmm? But Radhika's Kila Kinjit Bhav is dropped most of all. And therefore, Srila Krishna's Kavraj Goswami Party said, A Bhava Yukta Deki Radhasya Nayan Sangamahita Sukapai Koti Gun. When see Krishna sees Radhika's face light up with this bhav, at that time he experiences 10 million times more happiness than his direct union with her in the Nikunjas. Hmm? More than the direct Samprayog Lila. 10 million times more, only seeing this bath manifest on the face of Radhika. So how beautiful is this Dan Kelly? Oh, we're going over time. That's okay. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I'll skip a few things and just tell just a few essential things to finish. Srila Vishnu Chavi Thakur himself has written a commentary about this Leela. And there he gives the essence of Lila. He says, Dana Kelly Kalo Lupta Dharma Maria Dayo Baje Radha Mada Dayo Kama Lo Badamba Madan Ritam. The meaning is that if a person follows Dharma, if a person follows Maryada, social etiquettes, then everyone respects them. But if a person deviates from Maryada, if a person deviates from Dharma, then everyone criticizes that person, they become inglorious, they become ignoble, and they're despised by everyone. But Srila Vishnu Tantaku said, Oh, Dana Kelly Kalo Lupta, at the time of Radha Krishna's meeting, and Krishna demanding Radhika pay a tax to him, at that time, Lupta, Dharma Maryada, all religious principles and all social etiquette became Lupta, disappeared. Hmm? And I am, though a person who leaves these things is, is despised, but I am worshipping. Radha Madhava at that time. Radha Madhava Yo, Kama, Loba, Dhamba, Madanrita. I am worshipping Radha and Krishna's calm, their lust, their lobe, their greed, their Dhamba, their deceit, their murder, their pride and wantonness, and their Anrita, and their lies. I worship all of these things. Huh? What is despised in the world is the highest in that world. Huh? This world is the perverted reflection. It is the tucha, uh, vikrita, pratifalan. That means insignificant, perverted, distorted reflection of the spiritual world. But what is despicable there in the highest realm is the highest and most beautiful thing. So he said, I worship Radha Krishna's calm. Why? This calm is not actually lust. It's just pure love. Krishnendriya priti icha dhari premana. The desire to fulfill, satisfy one's own senses is lust. But the desire to please the senses of Krishna, that is called prem. And one may say, but when the gopis, they go to please Krishna's senses, then Krishna's so beautiful, his touch is so cooling, he's so fragrant and delicious. His adharamrita is so delicious. Do the gopis not feel any happiness? Of course, they experience extreme joy by the touch of Sri Krishna, by the fragrance of Sri Krishna. All of Krishna's Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasaganda give supreme joy to the gopis. But that joy that they feel, hmm, it makes them smile, it makes them laugh, it makes them tremble. 
that joy is also for Krishna's happiness. Because when see Krishna sees their reaction, then he realizes, oh, not only they're beautiful, I'm also beautiful. See how they respond to me. Hmm? So their happiness is for Krishna's happiness. So Krishna's Kavaraj Goswami Pad said, Etayeva say suk, Krishna sukha poshe. Say hey to gopi prema nahi kama doshe. Yes, the gopis do experience the sensory pleasure. But the sensory pleasures of the gopis, they're nourishing the happiness of Krishna. And therefore, nahi kama doshe. There's no defect of lust in any activity of Radhika and Sri Krishna and all Braj gopis. So Vishnu Charitaku said, I worship their calm. I worship their lobe. They're very greedy. You know, Krishna is demanding such a high tax. Oh, Radhika, for your red lips, you have to pay the tax of 10 million rupees. For your beautiful eyebrows, you should give 100 million golden jewel encrusted bows of Cupid. Krishna is demanding such a high tax. The highest tax because it's a deal. He, he, makes, he said, look, either you can pay a tax or you can accept my hospitality in this Nikunja Bhavan. <laughs> huh? So he makes the, the price of the tax so ex exorbitant that the only, the only choice is welcome to my Nikunja Bhavan. <laughs> so this is Krishna's greed. Radhika also has greed also. Radhika's Lampatyato Navanam Vishayam Prakurvam. Her anuragis makes her greedy at every moment to taste the sweetness of Krishna, which is newer and newer. And each moment she tastes it, the next moment she forgets that she tasted it. Hmm? Radha and Krishna, they meet, but even when they met, they forgot that they met. And in this way, their love is increasing at every second, blossoming at every second. So karma, loba, Dumba. Dumba means deceit. Hypocrisy. So this is all deceit from the beginning to end. The excuse is I'm doing my religious duty to go to the Baguru Rishis, the sacrifice. But actually the whole plan was to get delayed with Sri Krishna. Hmm? Radhika is pretending to object to Sri Krishna's advances. Then Dumba Mada, pride. Krishna said, Oh, you have to pay a tax because I am the rule. I am the adhikari. I am the gut adhikari. I am the toll collector of this place. I have authority here. So you should respect me. I am the authority here. And Krishna is showing pride. Then the Saki say, oh, look, don't you know that Radhika, she is Vrindavaneshwari. She was, there was a coronation ceremony. There was her Abhishek and she became Vrindavaneshwari. Krishna said, I also had an Abhishek. <laughs> and I became the Brajanava Yuvaraj. The crown prince of Braja. Then the gopis say, yes, yes, we know that. But, you see, in history, you have to understand. If a king has a coronation, but then afterwards, another king has a coronation, the one who had the last coronation, he's the one in charge. <laughs> not the previous coronation. So your coronation was before Radhika's coronation. So Radhika is the Adhikarini here. She's in charge. Like this. So in this way, they're showing their, their um, pride, their mother. Mm? And Angrita, always lying, lying to each other about their uh, motivations, their intentions, because of the Avahita Bhav. So in this way, actually we did not really go into the, to the subject, just give a little glimpse, what is the essence of what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested there for the first time in this world. The intense sweetness of the Viruddha Dharma. All the contradictions of brain, which is the characteristic of Braj, that is the Brajaniti. And that is why our Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Stansu Thakur, he made his bhajan place there in Brajapatanam. And it's the root of Gaudiyamat. This is actually the message, the real message of Gaudiyamat. First message, chant Hare Krishna. Hmm? Then after that, Diksha with Sambandha Gyan. And then when the Sambandha Gyan awakens, one gradually becomes qualified. To relish that subject. So everything is going towards that. So just to conclude, I want to say one brief pastime. And that is that every year the devotees of Navadweep they used to go and spend Chaturmasya in Jagannath Puri with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But at the end of the Chaturmasya, 
then it was time for them to return. So they used to come to Kashi Mishra Bhavan, all of them together. And, and Mahaprabhu loves them so much, but now separation is coming again. And Mahaprabhu began to glorify Murari Gupta. He was glorifying Vasudev Dutta. You can see in Chaitanya Tadamrita. When Mahaprabhu glorifies his devotees, it's as if he has five mouths. He's so enthusiastic. So at that time, when they were about to leave, then Mahaprabhu was speaking with Advaita Acharya. And he said, Dasye keichana keichana katipaye sakyaika evo baye Radha Madhava Naistika Katipaye Shri Dwara Kadi Shitu Sakya Dav Ubayatra Keshana Parshisi Ragavanda Juki Sakya Dav Ubayatra Keshana Pare Yevavata Antare Maya Bada Vidokilan Vitanavai Brindavana Sangya Mahaprabhu said If Anyone, their heart is attached to me with deep love. He's speaking to all the associates because he has so many associates in different moods. He said, all of you whose hearts are attached to me with deep love, then I tell you, if you have love for Radha and Krishna in Dasyaras, or if you have love for Radha and Krishna in Sakyaras, or Nishtaikya Katipaye Sri Dwaraka Dishitu. Or you have a relationship with Dorkadish Krishna in Dasiras or in Sakuras. Sakya Dhavu Bayatta Keshna Ye Vavata Antare. Or if any of you have love for any of my avatars in Sakuras or in Dasiras, then my Bada Vido Kilambitanabai Vrindavana Sangina. I am blessing you that you will attain my service in Madhuya Rasa. <laughs> the earth is shaking. <laughs> now, of course, we, we, we know that if a person will do sadhana bhajan, who they will become, it's fixed. Krishna knows. But there's such a thing, Prakash paid, Abhimam paid. So Morari Gupta is Morari Gupta, he's devotee of Lord Ram. Mahaprabhu tried to change him, he couldn't change him, Mahaprabhu was very happy. Hmm? But now, the, towards the end of his Leela, saying, those who are attached to me, I will give you Madhuya Rasa. But for those associates, in another, they remain in that mood, but in another Prakash, Prakash Bed, Abhimam Bed. So then, Advaita Acharya said, Nijechaya prapya yadyadeva stalantaram nova po antaram va Oh my Lord, by your wish. Hmm? This is why Advaita Chara, he can give Madhuya Rasa. Nityanandabu can give Madhuya Rasa. Hmm? Advaita Chara said, if my, by your wish, you can give us forms in other worlds, in other leelas, any type of form and any type of love, in any type of abode, any type of body, but we are praying to you that we'll always remember our origin in your Leela, Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Sachinandan Gauri Ki Jai. So then Mahaprabhu said, Tatastu, I give you this blessing. But then Advaita Chari had one more request. He had one more request. Hmm? Now this is, the, this is the highest point. Hmm? Advaita Chari said, it means, oh my Lord, I'm praying for this benediction. Please give me this benediction that until the end of the Kalpa, until the end of Lord Brahma's day, that your pure devotees will compose and perform dramas about your pastimes. Hmm? Not only at the time of Mahaprabhu, not only at the time of Rupa Goswami, not only at the time of Vishnu Tari Tagore. He said, give me this benediction until the end of Lord the Kalpa, that your Vaishnavas will compose and perform dramas of your pastimes and give me this benediction 
that the Rasik Vaishnavas, they will watch these dramas and they will hear these dramas and they will feel intense ecstasy. And give me the benediction that even normal people, even envious persons will see these dramas and they'll give up their envy and they'll become devotees. And give me this benediction that even the leaders of society, the kings, of society will see these dramas and become filled with bhakti and then make policies to protect all the people on the path of spiritual life. Give me this benediction. Then Mahaprabhu said, not to tastu, tavai vastu, tatai vastu. Definitely, definitely I give you this blessing. Go Premanande, Karimiyanande. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given this blessing that in the future, the devotees, they will make dramas. And these dramas will not only affect the devotees, but they will affect everyone. Even the leaders of the whole world will be affected by this. So, I just as you know, we are based in Anandham in Vrindavan. We invite everyone, please join us for Kartik, Kartik Brat, Kartik Parakrama. Half of Kartik, half of the days, we do intense chanting Harinam and hearing Harikata, morning and evening, and for half of the days we go out and visit the various important places and have the Harikata in Krishna's holy places. So I, we humbly request, if you have the opportunity, please join us for one month parakrama and retreat in, during the month of Kartik. And this year there, we are building a theater. Wow. A wow. Built with, with stadium seating. You know, stadium seating like this, actual theater, so that we can uh, develop this desire and fulfill this uh, blessing of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Gaurapani Mahamahotsava Ki Jai Prima Purushottama Sachinandan Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Ki Jai Nitahi Gaurasitana Premanande Hari Hari We have another class tonight, but it's not here. It's there at the festival site. So uh, it's, it, it's at the festival site in the evening. Is that right? Yes. 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 But you can do it here. Yes. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get involved with the management decisions. I'm your, I'm your servant. Just you tell me what to do. I'll do that. It's at the festival site. Yeah. So yes, everyone, please come to the festival. <laughs> <laughs> you can, if you want to negotiate in the car park with Nashinga. <laughs> no one wants to negotiate.